So yeah, adding a dedicated GPU to the Steam Deck isn't for everybody, but as you can see here, it actually works quite nicely, and this is one of the best performing external GPUs that we've tested so far. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be adding an external GPU to the Steam Deck. Now this is a bit different from what we've done in the past, and it's definitely the cleanest method that I've come up with so far. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you've probably seen me add some monstrous GPUs to the Steam Deck, trying to squeeze as much performance as we could, and when we did that, we kind of had a mess. This is one method, it's just an M.2 to PCIe. You also need an external power supply, so once I did that, came up with a little cleaner build. Got a 350 watt power supply strapped here uh, with the dock and everything, but still not as clean as what we're going to be seeing now. And it's all thanks to GPD. They recently released their G1 external graphics dock, and this thing is awesome. It actually works over Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, and Oculink. We're going to be using the Oculink connection here with the Steam Deck, and this just happens to have an AMD Radeon RX 7600 MXT. Really great performer. We've got 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM, and the whole unit is self-contained, meaning the power supply, GPU, and everything is built into the dock. And as you can see, I mean, it's super tiny. We've got some extra I.O. here, and it also does 60 watt PD fast charging out. And given the fact that we can actually connect this over Oculink makes it kind of perfect for little projects like this. I've made a couple videos, we've attached it to another handheld that had an external Oculink port from the factory. And as you know, the Steam Deck, you know, stock out of the box doesn't have an Oculink port, but I've added one here. So I've actually got a JS Aux clear back on here and I've kind of notched it out. We're using an Oculink to M.2 adapter, so the SSD is totally removed, and the operating system needs to be run from another drive, be it a micro SD card or an external M.2 drive. And just a heads up, eGPUs still don't work with SteamOS, so we do have to run Windows here. Now, if you're not familiar with Oculink, it's been around for a while, used on servers, and basically what it's here for is to bring PCIe outside of the case. It'll do up to 63 gigs a second, as opposed to Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4's 40 gigs a second, and it'll run at PCIe X4 4.0 instead of PCIe X4 3.0 like Thunderbolt 4. But since the Steam Deck's M.2 slot is only X4 3.0, that's what it's going to run at here. Like I mentioned, I did notch this back shell out. This is from JS Aux. You can get a bunch of different colors. And basically, we've just got that 2230 Oculink adapter right here in the M.2 slot on the Steam Deck. And I kind of wanted to have it notched out so I could have the shell on, kind of set it down, plug that Oculink right in, and start playing with that external GPU. Now, we're still going to be CPU bound, given that we're working with a lower end CPU in the Steam Deck, but we can definitely get much better performance with an external GPU than we can with the Steam Deck's built in iGPU. Usually, I would just run the operating system from a micro SD card, but I do have this adapter, which has an M.2 drive, so once we plug it in, we can actually run our operating system directly from here. It will offer faster speeds than the SD card. And the dock itself is going to add some extra I.O., like Ethernet, two USB ports, uh, HDMI, but we're not going to be using that because we're going to be coming out of the eGPU. And we can also charge the Steam Deck while it's all plugged in. This will do up to 100 watt PD fast charging, but the Steam Deck only does 45. So we've got everything we need here on the back of the dock, plus a 500 gigabyte SSD with Windows 11 installed. I'll give you a quick look at how the G1 eGPU is going to be set up with the Steam Deck. Now this does have that 60 watt fast charging out of USB 4. And that's all we're going to be using this USB Type-C cable for because we can't connect it to the Steam Deck over USB. We do need to use the Oculink adapter. So we'll just go ahead and plug this in right here. Got that M.2 adapter installed in the Steam Deck. I'm also going to plug USB-C right into the dock so we don't have to rely on battery. And everything's going to be powered from the eGPU itself. It's all self-contained, power supply and everything. And our video is going to be running from the G1. So we've got one HDMI and two full-size display ports on this eGPU. And once it's all set up, it looks a little something like this. We can set the G1 vertically or horizontally. It's really up to you. You want to turn the G1 on first, then we can power up the Steam Deck. And again, all of the video is running out of the G1 eGPU. So we should see that Steam Deck logo, but we're running Windows, remember. This won't work with SteamOS yet. And it should bring us right into the login screen. I've got a keyboard and mouse connected to the dock, just a wireless setup. Make it a lot easier to navigate everything. And here it is. 
So with this, we're relying on the Steam Deck CPU. It's based on Zen 2, we've got 4 cores, 8 threads, and it'll run it up to 3.5 gigahertz. Even in Windows, it's running at 15 watts. Now there are some mods that we can do to up the clock on this, but I'm going to leave it at the stock clocks here. And uh, if I open up Task Manager, you can see we've got that custom Steam Deck APU. For system RAM, we're relying on the Steam Deck's memory. We've got 16 gigabytes running at 5500 megahertz. But now, instead of using the iGPU, we've got that Radeon RX 7600 MXT. 8 gigabytes of VRAM, and through my testing, this is actually a really good 1440p card at high and ultra, but AMD really recommends this for 1080p gaming. And taking a look at GPU-Z, you can see that this is running at PCIe X4 3.0 because uh, the M.2 drive here is only 3.0 on the Steam DAG, but it's still going to offer a significant boost in performance over the iGPU. And yeah, I mean, like I mentioned, I have tested this with a couple different handhelds that have an Oculink port. I've also tested it with some mini PCs over USB 4. And in my experience, this has performed much better than even some high-end eGPUs over USB 4 because those only utilize Thunderbolt 3. I mean, a majority of them on the market are only Thunderbolt 3. Sometimes they're just not that compatible with USB 4 yet. So this is the best performing little eGPU that I've tested so far when it comes to a USB 4 connection. First thing we're testing out is CSGO. We're at 1080p high settings, just straight out of the box. Take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. You can see that the uh, Steam Dex APU is only pulling around 10 watts right now. And it will boost up to 3.5 gigahertz on all four cores. And I've also got everything listed for the GPU. That's only pulling around 32 to 37 watts. And this is really because we're bottlenecked by the Steam Dex CPU. We just don't have a super powerful CPU here. Moving over to Doom Eternal, this one performed way better than I thought it would. 1080p, high settings, we get an average of 123 FPS with this. Fully playable on this system with this external GPU. And now you can see that it's definitely pushing that GPU a bit harder. We're up to around 85 watts instead of 32 to 35 like we were with CSGO, and it's because this game does require a more powerful GPU to run. Now we're only at 1080p, but we are at high settings, and this does work great. I mean, as you can see, this game is running amazingly. The next game I wanted to test was Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm just using the built-in benchmark, and I wasn't impressed with this. I actually thought that we'd get much better performance with this game, seeing, you know, how well it runs on iGPUs in the first place. But at 1080p, high settings, no FSR, we only got an average of 63 FPS here. I figured we'd at least be up in the 80s, but yeah, that CPU is definitely holding us back with this one also. Even if I was to drop this down to low settings, it really doesn't matter. I could also go up to Ultra. We're still going to see around the same exact frame rate here. The 7600 MXT has more than enough power to play this game. It's just not enough CPU power here. Next on the list, we've got the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is kind of everybody's go-to test. And we're at 1080p high settings, no resolution scale, not using any kind of trickery or anything here. And by the end of this benchmark, it was pretty decent. Coming in with an average of 75 FPS. Now I will admit, while watching the benchmark run, we did dip under 60 quite a few times. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p medium, no FSR. We don't need it with the 7600 MXT. This is one of those games that'll actually run at 1440p medium with the correct CPU paired up with this external GPU. I've actually had pretty decent luck even over USB 4 with this game. CD Projekt Red has done a great job optimizing this game, and even on iGPUs at 720p, especially the new RDNA 3 iGPUs, we can see mid-70s at 720p low settings. And you know, I don't mind playing it at low settings on a smaller 7-inch display, but once you take the size up on that display at 720p, really kind it looks like a mess. So yeah, it's totally possible to use the new GPD G1 over Oculink with the Steam Deck. Now, is everybody going to run out and do this? Probably not, but it's pretty cool to know that we can. Hopefully, on the next edition of the Steam Deck, we do at least get USB 4 here. I'd also love to see at least one more USB-C port, even if it's 3.2, just to have a little extra I.O. on here for connecting different peripherals.
And one thing I haven't tried yet with the Steam Deck and an eGPU is a different Linux operating system. Something like Chimera OS might boot right up, but right now Steam OS 3 just won't work with these externals. But I would love to see Linux running with this GPD G1 connected. So that might be another video. I'll give it a try in a few days and see what happens. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you've got any questions or if you want to learn more about anything you saw in this video, I'll leave some links in the description. And like always, Thanks for watching.